Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Dr. Lethargo in the five minute pool on ICC. Lethargo, Letharjo. Anyways, he's a German FM, rated 2200 flat. Okay, so d5, we're going into a Grunfeld. I played bishop d2 here. Um, let's do that again. I kind of like this line for some reason. I've had decent results with it OTB, so I'll keep playing it. Yeah, bishop g7 hits this pawn. Let's play bishop g5, just restricting the e pawn. And this is a rather modest way of playing for white, I think. Uh, if e3, c5 could be played as a freeing measure. So I'm kind of tempted to play rook c1 here, but then bishop g4 is invited. Actually, I'll just play e3 anyways. I don't think c5 is anything I have to be especially concerned about. Hmm. And black advances aggressively on the king side, kicking my bishop back. I'm not sure about that. That seems like a weakening maneuver to me. And... I could play h3, I could play just bishop e2. Bishop e2 is the move that looks fine to me, so I'll do that. I'm putting the bishop on e2 for a couple reasons. One, I want my queen communicating with the d-pawn. Also, I wanted to break a potential pin that they could set up with bishop g4. So here, probably castle. Yeah, let's just do that. e5 is restricted, and their knight is here, so they can't play c5. So I feel good about having prevented black's main pawn breaks in the Grunfeld. Black has fairly free development, but on the whole, I gotta believe white's better here. Let's just play rook c1 now. Useful move, get on the half open c file. Knight d5, okay. So queen b3, or knight takes d5, queen takes, followed by bishop c4 comes to mind. Kind of liking the look of queen b3. Yeah, let's do queen b3. Hitting the knight, hitting the pawn, inviting a trade. If black takes, I probably will take with the rook. Taking with the b pawn strengthens, strengthens the center, but I like taking with the rook because that means b6 cannot be played. Black would lose their knight in that case. Yeah, hence they got to do something like this, but queen a3, b6, b4, knight b7, that's a poorly placed knight. Let's come here. Yeah, what to do with this piece? So... That line I just mentioned, b6, b4, knight b7, queen takes a7. That knight almost perishes on that square. I guess they have knight d6 in that case, but I will have won a pawn from that. Uh, moreover, after knight b7, bishop a6 could be a problem. Uh, he has bishop e4 to defend. I probably should just snatch the pawn. Yeah, let's do that. They'll play knight d6, and now I was thinking double up the rooks on the c file. Rook a8, queen takes c7, queen takes a2. That is just a pawn, though. It's a straight pawn. Hmm. I could withdraw my queen as well, but I really feel like doubling up the rooks is better. Let's do that. Note that my bishop controls some important squares, like knight b5 is not possible because a uh, bishop takes b5. If knight e4, I just have rook takes c7. So I'm up a pawn and all my pieces are participating, so this looks promising. Yeah, so now we'll take. I bet he takes here. He does. So do I initiate the trade or do I wait for black to do it? Not sure there's a huge difference. Well, bishop f1 seems patient. I could play that. Yeah, let's do bishop f1. I and mean, I'm not afraid of black like moving the queen away somewhere, so. All right, knight e4 looks active. Now I probably will initiate the trade. Take, take, and rook c6. Attacking the, c the b6 pawn. F2 is defended by my bishop, so that's fine. Black has a sizable time advantage, but that's nothing new for my videos. <laughs> you guys know this is a common occurrence. And for the position, I'm happy to be down some time because I feel like I'm on the verge of winning even another pawn. E5, that smacks of desperation. So I think their idea is that after take, 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 they get the rook into D2 and they're going to attack this pawn. But even then, I could just play f3, potentially. Eh, they might have bishop d3 in that case. Okay, this might be an attempt to stir up some trouble. I could play d5 here. 
but that's a little complicated. How about just taking with a pawn? Yeah, let's just take with a pawn. So that guards the d2 square. I was focusing on knight takes, but then they get that desired doubling of the rooks on the second rank, so I think this is even cleaner. Alright, so they're trying to eliminate this and again double rook d6 maybe. Looks like a good way to offer a trade and also diminish black's influence down the file. Appears to me like I'm going to be able to consolidate, although they could play rook b8 and they would be threatening to take f3 and then take e5. Bishop c4 looks decent here. How to get rook b2 then? Hmm. Let's go rook d5. I'm going to try to hold this pawn for a little bit. We'll see how that goes. Pawn b5 now. Or rook b5, rook b5. Eh. All right, I've created some issues for myself. Hmm. All right, I'm just going to play this. 45 seconds, got to hurry. Yeah, I'm up two pawns, but Black's bishops give him some measure of compensation. Probably not enough, but it's, it's a tricky enough position where I got to be cautious about how I do this. Bishop e6 looks pretty decent. Wouldn't be surprised if they played that. And then followed by g4 to kick my knight away. What they're going to take. I would not have expected that. Okay, they're trying to double up again. Um, let's counterattack their 7th rank. We will do that. Um, F4. Looks pretty good. Prime of that. Okay, so now I can get Rook in and maybe Bishop C4 going. Let's come here. So attack this pawn. 30 seconds though. This is going to be tricky. Hmm. Maybe move the king, king h8, so they can get rook g8 check in. Uh, it's got to be good after rook takes f7, rook g8, I can block with my bishop. If rook f8, I have bishop c4, and that pawn's a goner. All right, got to take now. Check. Should almost be forced mates in the mix here. Maybe they can just take this pawn. They might survive. Check. Hmm, they're gonna run their king. Uh, do I have to settle for a draw now? Check. I may have to. I really hate to have to settle, but I think I might. Time warning. Check. Check. Yeah, I don't see Check. how I'm gonna avoid a draw. Check. It's too risky on the back rank. Alright, draw. Well, some poor technique for me. Uh, down the stretch here, but a lot of that was time induced. I just didn't quite have the time to figure out how to win this. I feel like the position should be winning after f4. Maybe abandoning the first rank was not smart. Probably bishop c4 is just good here. Yeah, if I would have played bishop c4 instead of rook to c7. For that matter, maybe rook c6 is also a better move. Ah, that still invites bishop h4, though. We'll go back and have a look at it. So this line with bishop d2, so in playing this move, white attempts to capture on c3 with the bishop. So black played knight b6 here, which uncovers an attack on the d-pawn, but they could play bishop g7, e4, take, and then this. And white transfers the bishop onto this, this diagonal, which is pretty rare for a Grunfeld, actually. You don't really see white's bishop there too often. But that's the point of this system, to be able to recapture with the bishop, and often played a trade that dark score bishop that black has. Uh, but black played knight b6, I played knight f3. The way the game went was great for me. I would definitely repeat this line if I knew that black would play this way. Not sure about this h h6 and g5 plan. 
That seems a little optimistic for black. They weaken their king a bit, but more so they're just not getting the, the typical pawn breaks in that they need to to break down my center. I was talking about e5 and c5 and how those breaks were restricted. Let's just turn on the engine. It's possible they might be able to sneak in at e5 move somewhere as a sacrifice and then like play to regain the pawn. Like, let's say this happens. It might be unsound, but let's just check. Take, just following the engine line. And I was thinking something like this. But yeah, probably it's not a, not a for sure thing that black will win the pawn back. So white keeps an advantage. So black played bishop f5, I castled. This is a odd looking move. I think their plan is to move this knight and then play c5, and maybe they're trying to, I don't know, hide their intentions, although playing rook c8 when you have a pawn on c7 doesn't really hide your intentions that eventually you want to move that pawn. But uh, after rook c1, knight d5, I felt like I was getting some real advantage now. Hmm. So I debated between queen b3 and also just taking the knight, which the computer indicates is good. I thought about this line with bishop c4, but I thought they would send the queen over to a5, a3. Yeah, white's doing well even here. I played queen b3. That looks okay as well. Is there anything to be said for taking and then rook c5? This is not an idea I noticed. Because that x-rays that bishop on f5. So yeah, like black can't go pawn hunting. They just lose this piece. That's a cool idea. Queen d7, bishop b5 with pressure. Okay. Looks like a strong alternative. But I played queen b3, black took, and then I took with the rook. Taking with the rook seems correct to me in light of this knight on c6 and how if they play pawn b6, they would just lose this piece. But maybe there is something to be said for taking this way and strengthening the center. But I felt like my center was strong enough in its own right and that it might be more important to play down the c-file and get play uh, against this pawn on c7. So knight a5. Oh, I just missed the straight double attack on the two pieces. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that looks pretty good. Black can save the piece by playing c5, but that just entails losing a pawn. Because now the queen defends the knight, and this is blocked. Huh. But yeah, this is pretty good. Although in the game I won a pawn too, so that also worked out well. But here you see the engine thinks I'm just crushing. Plus three. Take, take with the queen. Black has nothing to show for the lost material. Uh, also, this is under attack and there's bishop c7. So even here there's some concrete problems for black. They have to play e5 to block those two threats. And they lose another pawn. So I went queen a3, the weaker move, and then b6. Yeah, here also I played inaccurately. I played b4 and then took the pawn on a7, but bishop a6 would have been better. Changing the move order, that's a, that's a nice idea and a rather obvious one now that I look at it. <laughs> so if the, this rook moves away, I'll have either bishop take c7 or pawn b4 attacking the knight. Yeah, both just crushing ideas. Again, the engine says black has to shed material, play c5, and give up the exchange. That shows the importance of changing around the move order when you're uh, calculating. Because I, I looked at b4, knight here, and then bishop a6. But I rejected it because of bishop e4, I believe. And I thought that black would be able to defend. But if I had switched up the move order in my head and just looked at bishop a6 first, I might have realized that I'm doing this with tempo on the rook, and I'm taking away the flight square on b7, and black doesn't have time to play bishop e4. So you want to try to get used to uh, trying different permutations of a good idea as much as you can. In a blitz game, it's a lot harder, but if this were a, a long time control game and I missed something like that, I would be very upset with myself. <laughs> so b4, and I went and go grab that, went to go grab that pawn. All right, so I'm better here, but it's maybe not as easy as I thought it would be. Knight e4, black's playing for activity. They do have the rook on the second rank, which gave me issues. When black played e5, I really thought this would be easier, though. Hmm. So I took with a pawn here after spending about 30 seconds. 
it's understandable that Black would kind of play more ambitiously like this because they want to rock the boat a bit. They have the two bishops, they're down a pawn, they're up on the clock, that's important. So it makes sense for Black to play to complicate rather than meekly defending. You know, I'm not going to expect Black to play a move like Rook B8 here, even though they did do that during the game and a few more moves. But E5 is consistent with trying to uh, create problems for me, make me burn time. So the engine says there's nothing wrong with knight takes e5. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Rook a d2. What about just this rook to d2? This is what I was worried about. Hmm. Bishop c4, take. Oh, and this rook is hanging. Okay. So on bishop c4, black has to take a timeout to do something like this. And now rook f6. Okay. Hmm. Hard to spot. So if here, I assume some tactic on f7, yeah, just take Check. a pawn, king here, bishop d5 defending this pawn. Once again, a line I would have spent more time on in a longer time control game. But in a blitz game, you're just going to be less likely to want to allow your opponent to double rooks and take your f2 pawn. I thought about allowing this and then playing f4, but the move that scared me off of that was bishop d3, playing to deflect my bishop from the back rank, guarding the g2 pawn. Although after this, it's possible check. that they can't even do this. I just play king f1. Yeah, they get like check. a check-in, but then my bishop controls some good squares like e2 and f1, so white's probably just winning. Although bishop takes d3, rook takes d3 is not easy. This pawn's under attack. I still have to worry about the doubling. So I took with a pawn, trying to control d2. And then here, I played rook d6, maybe playing for a restriction to directly. Maybe I should just grab this and deal with the consequences of this. Yeah, th this is one of these ideas that now that I look at it in analysis, it doesn't seem nearly as strong as it did at the time. So Check. here I'm plus five, here f4. And black cannot take this pawn because of bishop d3. Check. And they're getting mated. f5, Check bishop takes mate. mate. Or take on the song mate. That one's cooler. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was seeing ghosts a little bit with rook d2. Rook d6 seems unnecessary. Rook b8. Then I played rook d5. This seemed artificial, but black is threatening to take and then take this pawn on e5. The engine instead likes this move. So that threat, maybe it's not an actual threat because they do lose h6 if they play that. And I'm up two pawns. It is an opposite color bishop position, but two pawns are two pawns. And black doesn't have a doubling of rooks on the second rank in sight. So rook d5, rook b2, b5, and now black took. I was expecting bishop e6. I thought they'd want to attack my rook, and after the rook moves away somewhere... Like, say I play rook d6, they can play g4. And then if this knight moves, take here. Computer also thinks this is good, but that's what I was looking at during the game. But instead, my opponent took and then played rook a8, looking for rook a2. I played this, take e5, and then f4. Seemed good. Establish pawns on dark squares, kick black's bishop back. Yeah, and here's where I could have improved, it looks like. So I have 30 seconds left at this point. I just instinctively double the rooks on the seventh rank, but bishop c4 is much stronger. Getting the bishop off the back rank and attacking f7. This also controls a2. Just an all-around much better move, I believe. Whether I would have had the time to win from there is another matter entirely, but that looks better. And bishop h4 is accurate. Okay, so give up the f7 pawn, but go after Check. f2. And now if I want to have chances to win, I probably have to do king g2. Walking straight into discoveries. Check. Take king f3. And still advantage to white. I'm not sure it's winning anymore, though. But instead I played king h1, rook a1, and now this bishop is mortally pinned. Check. Check. So I had to start giving Check. checks. I didn't really see Check. a good way to proceed. Check. Because I can't defend this bishop. The only way I can do that is with the king. 
So playing like King G2 somewhere, but that really seems to be asking for it. Yeah, if my Rook's on a dark square, they can discover an attack and win the Rook. And even if it's not, I think it's too risky, especially having no time. So some big opportunities for me were missed. Uh, let's go back. Right when black played knight d5, I missed some moves around here. Like, I missed this idea of taking and rook c5, x-raying the bishop. This was okay. Good for white. Queen b3 was also fine. Really wish I would have seen queen b5 attacking both those pieces. Pretty clearly both of us missed that move. I don't think black would have played knight a5 if they saw that queen b5 was possible. Patterns are so important in chess because they influence your uh, decision-making so often. I mean, chess is, uh, at its core, often just a pattern recognition game. And here, I've seen many examples where a knight will attack a queen, and the best thing for the queen to do is to go to a3. <laughs> and that just played into my thought process here, queen a3. This is usually a good move. I mean, you get pressure down the a file, also you're monitoring the e7 pawn, but in this instance, queen b5 was simply stronger. Also, I really wish I would have changed up my move order and played bishop a6 first. That seems just elementary when I look back at it. And from here, it's it's not as easy. So my time was a factor, but um, even from here, white should probably win. Okay, so some missed opportunities, but a good position out of the opening. And Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Bye, guys.